Welcome friends, in the last video we talked about the basic meaning of cell signaling. Here in this tutorial I am going to discuss about the different components which are involved in signaling pathways and the general diagram for cell to cell communication systems. We start with the daily life example. All of you have used banks for the transaction of money, right? Suppose your friend who is away from you, he is the he is in need of money okay so what do you do you go to the bank okay and fill the voucher okay and after filling the voucher you go to the cashier counter hmm and you give the money to the bank employee and he sends the money to your friend so what's happening here let's draw a diagram for this there is one person who is sending the money one person who is sending the money he is you that person is you right then there is another person who is receiving the money another person who is receiving the money and that person is friend and in between these two there is one more person who is that the bank employee okay who is assisting the transfer of money from you to your friend and along with these there is something else also the computer and the computer application like software programs okay so this banking system of transaction of money from you to your friend is similar to cell signaling pathways. How? There is a cell which is producing or synthesizing the signal, okay? And that signal is received by another cell. And in between these two cells, there is something, some receptors or some proteins are there which are helping the transfer of that signal from the signal producing cell to the signal receiving cell. Okay, now we discuss these components. Okay, the first component here is the signaling cell. The cell which is synthesizing the signal. Okay, the second component here is the signal or the ligand. We also call the signal as ligand. Okay, this signal can be anything which is of biochemical nature. Okay biochemical nature it can be like protein it can be a carbohydrate hormones or fatty acids you can say okay the third one here is the responding cell the cell which is ultimately going to accept the signal from the respond uh, the signaling cell okay that cell would take up the signal okay the fourth component which is the most important is the receptor okay the receptor is the one protein which will bind it to the signaling molecule produced by the signaling cell okay so receptor is a protein that binds to the signaling molecule now there is a question on what basis the receptor will bind to the signaling molecule so we can draw a small diagram from this suppose the composition of the signaling molecule is like this the chemical composition okay and we have the receptor which is like this now there is some portion in these two the signal molecule and the receptor this portion which is similar in both of these molecules so the signaling molecules after it is exported out of the cell when it is in the ECM, 
and is in search of the receptor finds the same composition the sequence which is present in the receptor it finds now in this way it makes sure that the signaling molecule doesn't mismatch with another receptor which is present on the cell membrane you know why because it's not only one receptor which is present on the cell membrane there are so many receptors thousands of receptors so this strategy makes sure that there is no uh, wrong attachment happening the next component here is the second messengers the components which are coming secondary in this signaling pathway so the function of these second messengers is such that they take up the message from these receptors and they finally give it to the main and the final component of the signaling pathway which is known as the effector molecule so here is the effector molecule which is the main protein you can say that actually gives the result you know why because effector means the one which effects that gives effects so this uh, these uh, are done that is the components of the signaling pathway now we shift to the diagram let's try to know what's happening in this diagram now as i said there is a responding cell which synthesizes this signal so that cell is here suppose it has synthesized the signal initially that ligand or the ligand or the signaling molecule is present in the vesicle that round color ball round colored black colored ball is a vesicle containing the signal which is in red color okay before it is transported out of the cell the vesicle moves to the plasma membrane where it fuses with the cell membrane okay now it's the turn of the signaling molecule to go out of this cell to be exported out of this cell now the question here is how it will move from here internal to the outer environment that movement is done with the process that is known as exocytosis okay so with the help of this exocytosis we moved our uh, signal of interest now this molecule is present in the ecm here it starts searching the complementary sequence or the similar sequence which is present on the we know the receptor here the screen color is the receptor now before it attaches to the receptor the receptor is in inactive form okay after it's binding to the receptor the receptor becomes active now the activation of the receptor results in the conformational change of the receptor molecule or the receptor protein that ultimately triggers the activation of the downstream molecules these are the downstream molecules which are called as the signal transduction proteins or we also call them as second messengers now the activation of these molecules finally activates the protein which is known as the effector protein and this is the one which will ultimately give the results or the responses the name effector means the one which give effects now this responses which we are getting from the effector protein it can be of two types first is short term and the second we have long term response as the name so guess short term means the response which is for shorter period of time like for milliseconds to seconds on the other hand this long term means 
the responses which are happening for longer period of time. Talking about the longer, uh, long term responses, these are occurring in the nucleus of the cell. Okay, where we have the DNA and on the DNA we have genes. So, this represents the, ch the changes in the gene expression okay, and the development of the genes. On the other hand, this uh, short term response, it represents the cellular response. Any change in the metabolic activity or the metabolic state of the cell, this is done with the short term response. Um, we can take the example of glycolysis. Like um, glycolysis. What is glycolysis? Conversion of the sugar to pyruvate, glucose to pyruvate. What's happening here? Why we switch to glycolysis? When there is a need of energy, that is the ATP. And when this energy need is fulfilled, we stop this glycolysis. And there are many more examples like this TCA cycle, pentose phosphate pathway and other we can say the when we have a need of the fatty acid synthesis or the fatty acid breakdown we switch to the uh, beta oxidation like this. Okay, So these represent the metabolic state of the cell. So we have done this signaling pathway diagram. Now I ask you a question is this the end of the signaling pathway? Are we done with the signaling pathway? Was it up to the effector molecule only and getting the desired responses or the results? Are we not going to do anything after this? The answer is yes, we are going to do. It's not the end. We need to stop this pathway. Okay, we need to halt it. Because if it is continued, there can be negative consequences. Because if something starts, it needs to end also. Now, how we are going to end this? The answer lies here again in the effector molecule. The question is how it would do. We are not going into the detail. That would be when we are going to discuss about the different signaling pathways. Okay. For now, I just want to tell you how it would stop. I ask you something more. How it was initiated? How all this started? By the attachment of this signaling molecule to the receptor protein. So if somehow we remove this ligand or the signaling molecule from the receptor, it would again become inactive. So this is done with the help of this effector molecule. Here it is stopping, helping in the removal of this signaling molecule from the receptor and it becomes inactive again and is able to restart this pathway again. So this was all about the different components of the cell signaling system and the signaling pathway diagram. In the future videos I will be talking more about the signaling pathways. Thank you.